Welcome back to the best of the best years. So we left off with a steaming hot day at Navy Lakehurst, but that wasn't the only day, Roseanne, that temperatures rose. No, uh, we picked the hottest day of the summer and we filmed at a Great Adventure and we were outside for five hours in 101 degree weather. But it was all worth it because the crew and I got a chance to do a behind the scenes tour and we got our own great adventure. Where can you enjoy a morning motoring through an African safari, an afternoon watching dolphins perform acrobatics, and an evening enjoying an ice cream cone while taking in breathtaking fireworks? Nowhere else but Six Flags Great Adventure in Jackson Ocean County. In the 1970s, families have enjoyed great adventures, thrills, and attractions. Today, from concerts to parades, there's more to do than ever before for kids and characters of all ages. Well, Six Flags Great Adventure really does offer entertainment for the entire family, whether you're 8 or 88. There's something for the entire family. You know, we have four children's areas. We have 13 major coasters. Of course, right next door, we have the largest drive through safari outside of Africa. We also have a fireworks show, a parade. We have so much entertainment that it, it, I could go on for hours. We have a lot of entertainment here at Six Flags Great Adventure. We have a great concert lineup in our Northern Star Arena. We also have great entertainment just in shows in general. We have a great tiger show. It's brand new this year. It's the Year of the Tiger. We also have a dolphin show. It's uh, Team Green Beach Patrol. It teaches you all about recycling and the importance of our environment. So definitely there's entertainment for the entire family. If you prefer a great adventure from the comfort of your car, take a drive through the Wild Safari a 350-acre wildlife preserve that's home to more than 1,100 wild animals, including endangered species. So the Safari Park is drive through park, uh, four and a half miles, 350 acres. It's home to over 1,100 animals and over 55 species, many of them endangered, including the similar horned orcs and the Attix antelope, which are both considered extinct in the wild. It's a perfect opportunity for seniors to take a leisurely drive. Uh, we're open from 9 to 4. They can come through at, um, in their own car and take as long as they want. They can see all the animals in Safari Park and, it, and they stay in the comfort of their own car. They don't have to worry about walking around when it's hot or when it's raining. They're safely in their car the whole way through. So at the end of the Safari Park, it's a great opportunity for seniors to get out of their car and stretch their legs a little bit, walk around at what's called our Exploration Station. And it's just a small walkthrough area where they can see a couple other animals up close. We have a bunch of reptiles, lizards, snakes, some small mammals, capuchin monkeys, kinkajous, and quadamundis. If you'd rather work than play, Six Flags Great Adventure has an outstanding senior citizen employment program that mixes in a little fun, too. What's great about our Young at Heart program here at Six Flags Great Adventure is the, the wide diversity that we have of seniors who actually come in, uh, you know, based upon whatever their needs may be, whether it be flexible hours, whether it be just to get out of the house. Some are actually here to supplement some of their income because they're not, they're retired but not completely retired. And so it's great for us to be able to offer different types of programs for them. And, and actually be able to have them working with other seniors who may be you know, doing the same exact thing. As far as the things that we offer our Young at Heart program uh, members is uh, we do bingo nights uh, for them. Uh, we also do, uh, we have a flea market that we do once a year where they bring in things and it's almost like a yard sale and they actually help us, they donate that money to our scholarship program. And we also offer bus trips down to Atlantic City as well too for some of their time off. The flexible hours are great for them too because some may only be able to work one or two days a week. And we have some of those shifts that are available in a wide variety of different departments. To learn more about the entertainment and special events here at the park, visit sixflags.com slash great adventure. Or if you're thinking about employment, visit sixflagsjobs.com, fill out the online application 
then visit the Employment Center to set up an in-person interview. I applied because I thought it would be an interesting place to work, it would be a fun place to work. I was looking for something to do, being a retired engineer. I uh, didn't want to sit home and do nothing, so I felt this was a great opportunity using my retail experience that I had picked up between the time I retired and the time I decided to join Great Adventure. I'll greet the guests when they come in the store. I'm usually in the Emporium uh, down with the M&M, so it's a nice smelling store. Uh, get a lot of guests coming through early in the morning and because of my knowledge of the park I'm able to direct them and give them a lot of tidbits and hints as to how to make the most of their day. Uh, and I find the uh, engagement of the guests is what keeps me going day to day uh, and really do enjoy that. With so many fun things to do at the park, a visit to Great Adventure is a must for everyone. Reporting from Six Flags Great Adventure in Jackson, I'm Sandy Levine. So, okay, it was a hot day, we know that. Uh, what other things happened to you that day that you found interesting? Well, I actually had two favorite things. One, I got the opportunity to feed my favorite animal, the giraffe. And the other favorite moment was I had an idea to uh, tape Sandy riding the carousel, and I got to watch Ralph ride the carousel <laughs> backwards. And if you think she was sick at Lakehurst, I was green going backwards <laughs> with this camera on my shoulder. My favorite thing about that shoot was we, yes, we fed the giraffes, and like in this segment with Popcorn Park Zoo, for some reason, this giraffe fell in love with Matt Banks, because I'm shooting, looking through the viewfinder, all of a sudden this gigantic head comes into my frame, and it's like, hmm, and I didn't know if he was <laughs> gonna take a chunk out of him or, or what, but the funniest part of that whole shoot is we're supposed to feed the elephants. Now, the elephants are wandering over, and they come with this gigantic bucket of sweet potatoes. Who knew that elephants like sweet potatoes? So now you're supposed to toss the elephants, the sweet potatoes. Couldn't hit the broad side of the barn where they're beating them in the head. They're falling on the ground. The elephants are like, wait a minute. And they're standing there with their mouths wide open. And you'd think four people throwing sweet potatoes would be able to hit one. No way. No, no, it, not at all. But that, that was the funniest moment for me and apologies to all the elephants at Great Adventure. Now our last segment took Ralph, Roseanne and the crew to a cooler climate when they visited Lorita Winery, right? Yes, and folks, you wouldn't think there's wine country in Ocean County. Watch this. Hi everyone, I'm Desiree Behringer. Why travel to California's Napa Valley or Italy when right here in our own backyard, New Jersey has one of the largest, most diverse, and most beautiful vineyards? Lorita Winery is located in New Egypt. It boasts 250 beautiful acres of vineyards. They have walking and equestrian paths, a bed and breakfast, regular entertainment, and of course, plenty of wine tasting. Uh, there's a lot of wineries that are, are uh, people getting interested in the business, and we're finding that uh, New Jersey has um, soils that are conducive to the premium varieties uh, like Cabernet, Chardonnay, things like that. And the people that are getting into the business have, have a, a desire to produce that. Um, and, and what's happening is they're making some really good wines. The public is, is coming in, tasting it, and saying, wow, this is a lot better than we thought it was. And um, they're helping dispel the image, the negative image New Jersey has had in the past. I think California's competing with us because uh, what they're doing is, is uh, they're watching what the other states are doing. They're watching the, uh, the trends that people are, are following. Uh, the Chardonnays on the East Coast are, are a little crisper, and I think California is 
making their wines following the ones we're doing on the East Coast. And uh, so once they find where California is, I, I, I really don't have competition, at least not them. I have competition amongst the fellows that, that I make wine with in this, in this state. Open to the public since 2008, Lorita Winery offers so much more than tours of just its vineyards. Uh, tours can be uh, scheduled and arranged depending on the size of the group. And uh, we try and tie that in with some event that we're having here. And we're trying to have an event of some sort every weekend, whether it's entertainment, uh, piano players, or musicians of some sort. Uh, some, some point of interest for the people to come out and uh, here again, experience the winery. Uh, there's a couple that came in, they dropped their kids off at Great Adventure. And what do, what do parents do? What do the adults do? Well, this is a great opportunity, come see us. Uh, while the kids are having fun over there, come have a little bite to eat. Uh, we have a nice deli from Marjorie upstairs and you can get uh, whatever the daily special is and some very unique and, and interesting cheeses that are specifically uh, chosen to complement the wines and vice versa, the wines complement the cheese. So it, it's, it's a good day out. When Lorita owners Randy Johnson and Ray Shea began building and growing their vineyards, they made a commitment to protect the local environment. That commitment can be seen everywhere around here. The solar panels are for the winery. The vineyard, uh, there's no electrical requirement. So it's strictly those panels that we have. We also have a pavilion that the whole roof is a solar panel. And that provides uh, about 35 to 40% of the uh, energy required for the winery to operate the winery, the air conditioning, the lights, and whatever else. The owners have found, some time ago, the owners have found uh, old barns that they were very interested in, and uh, they thought that would make a unique facility. So if you have a chance, uh, look inside the building, and you'll see the main heavy beams, and those are the two buildings, those are the two barns. Um, one is perpendicular to the other, and that gives us the X configuration or the plus sign configuration. But they literally hold us together. Uh, there's a lot of recycled materials. And the, the fireplace is made from uh, recycled brick from an old schoolhouse. Uh, here, my wine library is covered with siding from the buildings that we took down. And so here again, it, it ties back to what we said earlier about um, using the term eco-friendly and, and going green. Uh, if we have the material, let's use it. If we have to look for it, let's find it. And that's what the fellows have done, the two owners. Lorena Winery is also becoming a premier place for special events and fundraisers like wine tastings and musical entertainment. Plus, if you'd like to extend your visit, there's the Dancer Farm Bed and Breakfast right here on the winery grounds. The Bed and Breakfast has 10 rooms. Each room is themed differently. They're reasonably priced. It's a great place to go, relax, and spend the night. Diana, the innkeeper, is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. So it's definitely a great weekend getaway if you go there, come here, and enjoy. The visitors to Lorita can also go to the Equestrian Center. They can have lessons and go for rides throughout the vineyards, throughout the different trails that lead from the vineyard to the Equestrian Center to the better breakfast. They also offer the therapeutic riding where children who have disabilities or somebody recovering from an injury can go and ride the horse. It's very beneficial to the, both their spirit, to building muscle and hand-eye coordination. For more information, visit LoretaWinery.com or call 609-758-8000. You don't need to be a wine connoisseur to enjoy a day here. There is plenty to do and see, a feast for all the senses. From Lorita Winery, I'm Desiree Beringer. Salute. So, winemaking is a little bit different than what you pictured it after this story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I envision guys with lederhosen's and little wooden casks and yodeling or whatever you do. And I was really surprised. I mean, there's steel tanks and gauges, and it was quite scientific. They actually had a lab there where they were, you know, they doing whatever scientific things they would do, and you would, wouldn't think that they would be going into making wine. And I don't drink at all, and I had a wonderful time. There's a lot to do there, and it was very, very interesting. Thanks, Roseanne. Well, that's it for our look at the best of the best years. For Roseanne Durso and Ralph Bertini, I'm Lee Kobus. 
Thanks for watching. We want to hear from you. Send us your comments and show ideas. Call the Best Years Hotline at 732-255-0445 or email thebestyears at ocean.edu. Visit us on the web at www.ocean.edu slash best.htm.